I'm like mellow when I shoot, I don't miss Yeah, they better check my stats, call me Chris Call me Chris. Yeah, I ain't fly, but I'm known to whip that trick Whip that trick, yeah. real quick, dog. Let me talk my ish, ish Real quick, dog. let me talk my ish Talk my ish Real quick, dog. let me talk my ish Talk my ish Real quick, dog. let me talk my ish Talk my ish Real quick, dog. let me talk my ish Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, number of neighbor pals, baby mamas, baby daddies, and everybody in between. Welcome back to the Gresham Leafs Podcast. This is another edition of Talking Ish with yours truly, Joshua Gresham, aka Gresh. And joining me for the very first time is one of my main peoples in recent memory, none other, representing the Shakers Den, the Shakers Den Podcast. Yes. I'm here, Nikki Boo. Miss Nikki. Oh. What's up with ya? <laughs> What's up? What's up? I'm glad. I'm very happy to be here. You know, I, if you follow me on Twitter, you know, I, I talk a lot of shit, a lot of itch, mm-hmm. uh, as they say. So, and I'm never, I'm never afraid to hold back. So I'm very excited to see what we get into tonight. Oh yeah, we, we and it's funny that you uh you say you talk shit. You're not exactly like that in person from uh, from the interaction that I had with you in Detroit. No, I'm much of a like in person. I feel like I'm a little more quirky, and I'm a little more oh, yeah. re- reserved in a sense. But um, if you you if you're ever with me for more than a couple hours. You'll see. You'll see a little more of me on Twitter. But yeah, I'm I'm not very yeah. in person. I'm nice. I'm very like I'm, I love love. I'm a very friendly person. I introduce myself to everybody. I talk to everybody. I'm a people person. Um, just mm-hmm. you know, just don't cross the you know, don't cross that bridge. Don't cross that border. Yeah. Don't cross that bridge. Because once you cross that bridge, you don't exist to me. Because I tell people all the time. Whew. It's like you mentioned Twitter. I tell people all the time. Once I mute you, I forget you exist. Mm. <laughs> mm, and we can still people. be following each other. Yeah. I want to know how many people have me muted because I know they do. Oh, yeah. For sure. Like, mm-hmm. some of the stuff I'll be like, all right, Nikki. <laughs> yeah. But, I but then again, that. it's like, it, it, I hit you with the I because it's like, I know 9 to 19, you're joking. Trolling. So it's like. And and I and I take and I don't take Twitter seriously because Twitter is subjective and as well as it's not really some it's, I don't live and breathe it. Like as soon as I'm off my phone, I'm in my I'm in the real world. Yeah. Like, so I don't take what you say or do to heart. Yeah. And it's and half of the time it's wrestling related, but even when it's not, it's just it's a moment to just breathe. Like it's it's social media. It should be fun. I don't get on social media to badger people and argue and do stuff like that. But if that door comes a knocking, I'm I'm not blocking the other trolls. Well, I'm gonna respond and then block because that's how I play. You know, I play hard. So mm-hmm. I want you to think that you're gonna be able. I want you to in the process of reading my response, done. It vanishes. You know, go outside and. You go, you go, you go my route too, because what I do is yeah, you I tweet. Are filthy and animal. I, the, I used to be. I'm, I'm, I'm troll. I'm kind. Of, well, yeah, have, I, have I? Am I still worse? As I was over I mean, the like last year, because I feel like summertime. I switched a little bit. Summertime, you were definitely villain, like villain. Mode. I was a villain. I was, summer 2023, Gresh was a villain. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> this guy is going places. Okay, <laughs> remember his name. When I met you in Detroit, I told you I was like, you, "You're literally one of my favorite pages," because <laughs> the all like you can be authentic, and I think a lot of people are scared to do that. Um, if I yeah. say something like, "I don't like this person in wrestling," it's like, "How do you don't like this oh, person?" Uh, it's like, oh, yeah, I don't. For sure, because sure. I don't, yeah, and it's like. You know? I- I feel like a lot of people should should go that route. Like I obviously toned my 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 filter down a little up a little bit because of recent events in real life. I'm like, right. let me guard myself more. So so it's like outside of that, I yeah, it, it, I feel like a lot of people in wrestling should be authentic. Yeah. Like everybody wants to be pro this company or 
anti this company. And I'm like, at the end of the day, it's professional wrestling. It is performative arts. It is theater. Like just like just like I go out and enjoy your your typical Marvel movie or your or I wouldn't say DC because they bombed, but it's like these type of movies. Just you can do the same thing with wrestling. Like, and if you don't like it, you can just not watch. Because the beauty, it's like that's what cracks me up about social media. They act like you can't hit that X button if you're watching online, or you can't just turn the, the damn TV. Like, and I think a lot of and people, that's how I, that's how I view wrestling. I think a lot of people only don't not watch because of the fear of missing out. Like, I feel like they feel like it's different from like sports because there's an off season in most, if not all, sports. With wrestling. It's 365. And what what is so funny to me is when people think that I hate a certain product, but I'm the same person who was pulling up to Dark and Elevation when there was free wrestling mm. and people didn't want to watch it. But every Monday and Tuesday, Nikki was watching and learning other talents and going to see other talents. So it's like, that's why I say the social media shit is a facade for a lot of people oh, yeah. because even though people know like people know how you like like how you really feel about certain things and people also don't know when you're trolling and i think that's the beauty in it with with social media is because it's supposed to be a networking thing and you're supposed to network with different wrestlers and talk to different promoters and talk to different fans. Mm -hmm. That's what you're supposed to do. But instead, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm muting myself from this either. Cause I do it. But instead, a lot of us get online and we just complain, 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 complain. And as much as we well, could, yeah. like I could cut off a bad ass episode of rampage because it's poor every week, but that's just my opinion. Lately they've had queen Aminata. So that gives me a reason to watch. But am I going to sit there the whole hour? Mm -hmm. No. When she's done. It's 10 o'clock on a Friday. <laughs> like, when she's done, I'm wrapping. We, we picking this shit up. We finna go. Like, <laughs> like, like you like me. Like, oh, oh y'all kicking off with this? All right. I ain't watching the rest of this. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just going to watch this one match. I don't care about Darby versus Jeff like y'all do. And that's okay. I'm not <laughs> badgering y'all. I'm not badgering y'all for caring about it. I'm saying I don't give a fuck right. about it. What is the problem? It's it's an uproar because now I don't want to finish the main event. Girl, I... What? Did you see Charlotte and yeah, yeah, it's like Hell for the 50th time? And it's like... I did. <laughs> and it's like they act like what you're saying is going to change the trajectory of wrestling. Because at the end of the day, and it's like, I have to, and I catch that sometimes too. Like whenever I say I don't like this or I like, like a lot of people liked the gender versus Seth Rollins match. Yeah, I hated it. I watched it twice. Didn't like it. And they was like, yo, what you mean? It was, it was the best match on the show. I'm like, congratulations <laughs> to you. But to me, it was not that. I liked the Joe and Hook match more than I liked the, the gender and Seth match. Yeah. That's okay. Wrestling is subjective. They be acting like it, it's the end of the world when you say, oh, this shit sucks. Oh, this is the worst match I've ever seen in my life. And I'm like, no. And then, oh, don't, don't, my favorite is, oh, you're attacking the wrestler. No, I'm attacking the match. I'm not getting personal with the wrestler. Like, I can, I can say I don't like this character. That don't mean I don't like this person. I don't know, just because you don't know how to tell the difference between the person and the character doesn't mean I don't know how to. I'm a 29 year old man. I know the difference. <laughs> I'm friends with wrestlers who are I've, I've I've talked to them in character and out of character. Yeah. So please spare me the whole educating me on like oh this, you're attacking this. No, you're attached to this person. You don't know the mm. difference. Mm. You kind of ate that. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> You kind of hate. I've been getting tired of that, man. Like, the, I, when, I, when I was, um, when we first started doing a lot of more, you know, like post shows related to WWE products, I would get a lot mm -hmm. of heat for <clears throat> not being a Liv Morgan fan. And hmm. I always, so here's the thing, kayfabe, because 
because obviously people don't understand that. But K in kayfabe, I never cut anyone slack because I went through the Charlotte blackball era. So like, I don't feel <laughs> sorry for anyone because of what we experienced during that time. So I'm never going to like hold off on how I feel about someone, especially if it's a character. I'm talking about Liv Morgan, right? I just was not a fan and I wasn't getting why there was this big uproar of her getting a push. I felt like it should have been Dana Brooke. And I've always said that. I've been a huge fan of Dana, yeah. Dana, 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 since I first saw her. And right. Eventually, I did warm up to Liv because of the her ability in the ring got better. During the first couple mm -hmm. matches, like at day one, I was not in entertained or thrilled by her wrestling. And to be fair, she was in the ring with Becky, and I love Becky down. But she's not my favorite person to watch wrestle all the time. You know, it depends on who you're dancing with. Right. And I just remember getting a lot of heat mm -hmm. for the live thing. And people were like, you hate, because I tweeted about this the other day. They were like, you hate women's wrestling. And it's like, no, you want, you <laughs> think that advocating for women's wrestling means that we like every single person, every single woman, and we have to agree and sit there and say yes. And that's not how it works. Women's wrestling advocating is about getting women exposure, putting women and mm -hmm. right women and deserving women in spots in different promotions that doesn't just exist in WWE that's everywhere so I just that's the worst that I've ever had it I feel like online in wrestling because you know live fans are very you know they're they're very adamant I, I had a few people unfollow me and I get it I get it but the same way that people were talking and I mean like attacking Charlotte's personal like like, come on. The way y'all were really like trying to tear it down, girl, y'all, y'all played. And See. that was a dark ass time. But See, yeah. it. and, and, and it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> See, it, I, I believe it's like with that. I feel like a lot of people, and I'm this is just my mm -hmm. take. The reason why I don't see a lot of what you see is because I choose to not interact with a lot of people. Like if you look at who I'm following and who I'm who who is following me, the mm -hmm. number of people I follow is a lot less than the people that are following me. Yeah. And it's not because I feel like I'm I'm a big shot or I'm this big person. It's because I like my timeline to be fun. Yeah. And peaceful. Like I want I want my friends to promote their content so I can retweet it. Yeah. But I don't need to see I don't need to follow random wrestler lover 1995 who we just tweeted nothing random. but nonstop random shit or retweeting porn. Like, I don't need to see all that. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I, like, I'm not trying, like, because I've had people ask me, they're like, why, do you, why don't you follow me back? Why don't you follow me back? I'm like, I literally had someone in my DMs send me a meme talking about slap me in the face with your, and I'm like, oh, first off, I don't know you. So that's why I'm like, I, oh, I, I, I Everybody can't DM me, but I see the re yeah. the request, and I'm like, "It's a dangerous." Place. See this why? I, I'm like, see this why I don't get on online. <laughs> yeah, it just, but as far as like what you said about Charlotte, I never understood. Like, I wasn't. I'm not Charlotte's biggest fan. Well, I, I yeah. wasn't always there. I'm, but you that. are. I but I'm saying, but the, Mark ever that was well. And I respect that. So, like, you know, Paige was really no. That's what I'm saying, I, and that's why know? I respect. And that's and I respect that. And I respect that wholeheartedly. You know, I don't push. People That's what I'm saying, and, I, and, and it's her. like I'm not saying that I'm not her, me. And when I tell people that, they be like, "Oh, you don't like her." I'm like, I'm not her biggest fan, but I can give credit where credit is due. Exactly, and that's I know how to praise when she's good. When she, when it, when it, whenever, and I, and it's like whenever people see me criticize Charlotte, in this case, they always assume that I'm attacking her. I'm like, no, I'm attacking the booking because sometimes the booking doesn't make sense in her favor. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not, I don't even, and I'm like, and I, and I look at the long term. I'm like, they probably shouldn't have did that. And I, I'm like, yeah, they shouldn't have did that. But one thing I know what to do is I don't beat it into the ground. I'm like, yeah, they probably shouldn't have did that, but it is what it is. I'm not the booker, and I move the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> Some people literally harp on it for like months and months and months. I'm like, dog, you blame the I forgot person. about that because, like, you blame the talent. I would never. What's so funny to me is people were expecting this woman to go back there 
And every time they said that she was going to get a raise or a promotion, she was supposed to look around and say, you know what? Not me. Let me give it to someone else. And even when she did, even when there were times when she did, she wasn't allowed. But to think like to think that people wouldn't you wouldn't do that at your job. Like you wholeheartedly mm -hmm. would not do that at your job. Oh, me? You no, I'm just you more as money? a general. Like more you know money. What I'm, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna, gonna take, take it. <laughs> You're not gonna look around and be like, you know what? My girl Susie over there, she been eating it up, honey. She been selling, she been she should take this WrestleMania cut. What she should take my WrestleMania Hell cut. No. Not 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 uh, nah, yeah. not not but see that's what I'm saying. Think... And it's like I don't I don't I will never knock. The talent. Yeah. I will not the bookings. I'll be like, maybe they could have had this person in this spot, but yeah. it, then again, she did eat that match up. I can't really mm -hmm. I can't really knock her for killing the match. I so. will say I think a lot of that has a lot of a lot of that um she's a flair, blah blah blah. That's gone. People really love her now, and it scares the hell out of me how people have like clinged on to her because. 17, 18, 19, black ball era. Like, I, I don't care. Like, that was a black ball era. Like, she, girl was going down bad. And, like, fans were still supporting. We were trying to do everything we can. Especially for the ones that love Sasha just as much. There was a heavy pain because they are made for one another. Like, I know. I get it. Becky and Charlotte go crazy. Bailey and Sasha go crazy. Charlotte and Sasha are just made for one another. And when I say made, I mean like they dance when they get together. And it does hurt sometimes when you see your two faves and one's kind of not. I hope both teams win. <laughs> right. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's competition. So you have to be realistic. and. All right. That's why I feel like there's just a a piece of me that just doesn't want um because we're talking about like you know Twitter saying crazy things on Twitter. There's a piece of me that just doesn't want Mercedes to go to AEW because I just feel like there's some booking stories in WWE that need to be resolved. There needs to be things that transpire that's just me from a fan standpoint i can't speak for her if she goes to aw of course mm -hmm. I'm gonna watch of course i'm gonna be there i'm gonna be a, a fan it that's not the point the point is like i just as someone who loves wwe it would it would be nice like you know and i think that's mm -hmm. the biggest just to see her yeah yeah i cried yeah, the sure. I'm learning a lot like i um I cried because there was a moment that I felt like I may not, I may never see Sasha and Charlotte wrestle ever again. And that is my entire existence in wrestling, to be honest. Like in my adult life, th those two women, including the four horse women, that's my existence. And, you know, you get older, things happen. There's been 10 years. And things change, but I just remember watching her come out at Wrestle Kingdom. I'm like, I'm so happy. But mm -hmm. um, and it's and it's funny. It's like how you mentioned social media, t f Twitter, Facebook is worse. <laughs> I have Facebook, but it's fancy. Facebook. <laughs> Facebook wrestling is the is worse than Twitter. Surprisingly, like they are. I don't know how to explain them. Twitter is hell. Facebook is you're just in the pit of no return. Like, there's no coming back. There's no saving that community. They are a pit of danger, pun intended to Batista. Uh, but <laughs> let's talk about the the Shakers. Like, yeah. we'll, the creation of that podcast. and the Because for those of you who don't know, we are two fellow content creators collabing yeah. right now. But your your platform, like, wh like, what is the bread and butter that brings the Shakers to life? So, um, the Salt Shakers, <clears throat> we've been together for almost three years now. Um, we are the most dominant tag team in wrestling media history. Uh, a plethora talk, talk, talk. of, yeah, yeah, and I mean that. Um, a plethora of, of hundreds of interviews um, from people all over the world, including Speedball, 
um, Trinity, Bianca Belair. We've we've interviewed a plethora of people on our own platform and in a um, universe that we were stuck in for about two years. <laughs> um, but yeah, and now we are in conjunction with Battleground Podcast. You can hear the biggest wrestling podcast on iHeart Media. That's Battleground Podcast. They recently just mm. reviewed Ivy Now this week. Um, and we, Tim Battle, he runs that. And that we got into after we like, because it was just like the universe had kind of opened up and we kind of just fell. We didn't know where we were, we were at. Uh, we were in Nashville, though, and we actually, after we were thrown from that universe, we saw SummerSlam. Um, weeks, weeks. Oh, after okay. Oh, okay. when I came back, oh, okay, that's cool. when the shit hit the fan. I went oh, on okay. a crazy AEW run. I went to like two collisions of Dynamite. Um, I was hanging out with them, you know, keeping it cute, and then October is when. You know, we hit the universe. Shit hit the fan. Yeah, shit hit the fan. So <laughs> October 5th was our yeah. first show for the Shakers Den. Um, and we we do Impact. Now, of course, we run the greatest TNA po- post show in the world, in the Den. Mm. Um, you know, Impact and TNA is really um, our bread and butter. It's our baby. It's everything that we love. Um, we didn't get to do NXT in the universe. So now we have an NXT show. It's uncut. It's raw. We have some daddies over there, you know, Corbin, uh, you know, <laughs> we got some daddies in WWE, so we have to show them love on Uncut, and then- uh, we The have- Wolf Dogs. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they win. When they win. Okay, but um, we also do a I'm- Monday Night Raw and um, SmackDown show. We wanted to be old school with that because- I personally love Monday Night Raw. I've always been a Monday Night Raw girly over SmackDown. I know that's crazy. I love SmackDown, but Monday Night Raw has always been very meaningful to me. Like a Monday, kicking back with your family, watching some wrestling. I'm normally off on Mondays. I was born on a Monday. So by default, Monday Night Raw. But I run the side of that. And then she does SmackDown, Dreon Santana, my tag team partner. And we go head to head to see... Which brand, you know, did the thing. And now the Shakers Den has opened up to reality TV um, in this spectrum. I know people talk and say trash TV or whatever. But we cover and do watch alongs for baddies um, and some programs on now that's TV. Oh, my brother loves that. My yeah. brother loves that shit. Mm-hmm. South Central Baddies. Any. And, oh, yeah. So we've kind of just opened up the spectrum to just more things not just wrestling mm-hmm. but with the wrestling that's really you know that's our bread and butter we try to i mean we're consistent. and i know y'all probably going to cover y'all probably going to cover bianca and montez's show absolutely. right that drops february absolutely so we were talking about that yeah, earlier it, it, it comes it falls right into the into the platform it literally does and my sister who my sister who who started watching wrestling because of total divas she was like you got hulu i'm gonna watch that show <laughs> <laughs> all she all she all she saw was like a two minute promo. She was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna watch that." Yeah. So we already know that that reality show is going to bring some new fans because even though it's on Hulu, knowing WWE and them, they're going to like see how that do, and then they're going to put it on main TV, and then that'll be a new influx of uh, wrestling fans. Yeah. So and Hulu uploads their yeah. shows for WWE quicker than Peacock. Uh, when you go on, like NXT is on there the next <laughs> day, literally. Peacock. Oh, okay. Good times. <laughs> good times. Good times. Good times. Good times. But um, also it's like with the with the shakers, your your ta- your partner in crime. Uh, how yeah. did you two link together? So From, we was met it because of the under universe. Um, well, we met before the universe, and people didn't know. So we came in as a tag team. We didn't want people to know. Um, mm-hmm. but we met on Clubhouse. So we were doing uh, rooms. I met uh, Justin from the Wrestling Classic. He was hosting rooms, and I was in school at the time um, doing journalism and some multimedia journalism and stuff, learning how to edit and shit that I didn't want to do, that I do now. That's amazing. That's crazy. Um, But I met him. We were all in the room together, and me and Santana, we just really, like, hit it off. 
um, we talked about Bad Girls Club, and that's kind of where we kind of got, um, you know, more familiar with each other. We ended up meeting each other, um, but we were a tag team before we actually met in person. So when we jumped to mm -hmm. that universe, um, I was on the writing and hosting side and she was the editor and hosting. Um, and when, then we started mm -hmm. doing shows together. So when we started doing shows together, that's when we started to interact more. Cause it all, it had always really been like an audio conversation and everything. Um, and then we finally got to meet when um, we went to WrestleMania Houston, Dallas, not Houston, Dallas. We went to Dallas and we met and then we just kept doing our thing. Um, I think once we started to see that we had a really like greater connection outside the ring, like it really felt like I had a tag partner because I'm not a singles kind of person. When it comes to the wrestling mm -hmm. media world, I always treated it like um, wrestling, like like that's yeah. how we treated it. Um, and it was fun doing that because yes, this is a character, but Nikki Bougie is still Nikki Bougie, but it just allowed us to have, um, more fun. We came Bougie. up with the salt shakers. Um, we're actually, our inspirations, um, come from Kira Hogan and, uh, Tasha Steele's Fire and Flavor. Also from the beautiful mm -hmm. people because we are TNA <clears throat> Impact girlies. So a lot of the stuff that we saw them doing back then was very, um, we like to be, and that's kind of why we have NXT Uncut because we want to be sexy. We want to be fun. We want to be like that kind of what right. the beautiful people, like they were sexy and divas, but they could wrestle their ass off. And that's what I kind of liked. And then with Tasha and Kiera, literally, like, Santana is Tasha and I'm Kiera. Like, and that's, we kind of give off that vibe. Um, when we saw them in Impact, you know, during their run with the tag team titles against Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering, I think we just got a lot of more, like, inspiration. So that's when I was like, the Salt Shakers, like, that's... That's us. We the salt shakers. Like we, we shaking shit up. We can be a little salty sometimes. Like, and when we would do our shows, we were always super heels. So I always just felt like the salt shakers just fit. So we've been doing this now for three years, and it's very. I'm I'm always in contact with Santana every day, all day, twenty four hours. We are a real, like, tag team. Like this ain't no facade like this is real life like if we was to ever get in the ring you know that would go crazy i doubt it will ever happen because i have no interest in getting in the ring <laughs> but you know as far as the media side you know we pride ourselves in being that tag team like we want to be the standard we want people it was a time where people weren't even talking about impact and we were talking about impact and we've been we've been talking about impact and i'm not i don't have problems when people decide now it's time to talk about something because eventually that's how we were but mm -hmm. you know i do I, oh, like this show because we, we 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 didn't start talking about it we're, we're two this year is when we're going to start talking about tna more yeah see? because and it, we was gonna we was i was watching it at the end of last year but i felt wrong like to jump on it right i said let me wait until they fully rebrand as tna then okay. go full throttle with yeah. like talking about it reviewing and all this stuff because yeah that's the only way and, and it's like as a long time fan of tna it's like i was a fan of it and then i fell off when they became gc g uh was it GC, gfw uh under jeff jarrett oh with, with um, alberto yeah was the champion i was like yeah crazy. i'm over this <laughs> crazy time so if anybody who went through oh. that version of impact are still here yeah y'all were in the trenches and this yeah. is somebody who so barely survived tna 2010 yeah, yeah i watched <laughs> so, it like when i was much younger and then pandemic is what made me really get into it and then i went back and watched um the match between um sammy callahan and um Tessa and I mean that's mm. what made me start like getting more involved with Jordan Tessa. Grace. Yeah, you know, 
It Tessa happens. is one of those who you like. I have my <laughs> own, um, and some people know this, some people don't, but I have my own reservations and opinions when it comes um, to Tessa, and they're not always agreed upon for everybody for everyone else. No, but, that's fine. You know, she that's was fine. always someone that I um it was very interesting when I got in for, in media because she was one of those people like you couldn't even bring her name up like a like a Chris Benoit. You couldn't say his name. Like if you said his oh, name, oh yeah she was black ball. You'd be yeah. canceled. Um and I wanted to know why. Like I always wanted to know why. And then as I started to do more research and the internet, I'm like, okay, great. Let's do some field work. Um, and I actually had a conversation with her in LA. Um, mm. And recently just spoke to her earlier. Um, so mm. she's someone that I, I don't believe in cancel culture. And I just really never have. And I just- I understand that. I understand I that. I just can't allow people- it, it, It's like, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Right. Like, and I was like, I get that. I get. I honestly yeah. get that because it's like it's a lot of things. It's like if she, it's like it's guilty in the public opinion, and even then, if you choose to apologize or whether you did apologize, I don't know. I don't know this person. I've never had a conversation with her like you have. Right. If you choose to publicly apologize or not, a p- public opinion is not going to change. It's like, not. and the reason and why I brought that up. It's like what? people make an allegation. Like mm-hmm. when you when you hear an allegation in this spectrum, it's automatically guilty. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't, I don't work. And like even that. if you are guilty, I feel like everybody has a a way to learn and not do that again. Yeah. Case in point, when I got nearly got canceled for. Uh, doing a having a relation with someone in the wrestling community, and I kept contacting, kept contacting, kept contacting, and I was I was nonchalant, I was a dick, and but it's like after getting called out, I was like, yo, yo, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? And and after having a conversation with my mom, that was my, my that was my last promise to her. She was like, yeah. all right, if you ever do this again. It's on you, but I'm telling you this right now. This isn't who you are. This isn't who, how you raise. This isn't what you do. So what you do as a man, as a person, you apologize. You move forward. And anybody who accepts it and accepts you, cool. And if they don't, that's their prerogative. That's their choice. They they deserve to not feel... They, they deserve to not have anything to do with you. And that's been my thing ever since. It's just been, yo, let's do this. Let's Let's... Prove that I'm not this slimy uh, womanizer. Like it was a whole bunch of stuff that was going around about me. So it's like I get that. So it's like when it comes Tessa, and the reason why I don't really dismiss anyone who talks about Tessa is because I'm like, all right, I, I'm. There's people who are still in the community in wrestling that's probably said worse than nigga. On top of on top of. On top of Terry Bollea is still in this and is still in wrestling. <laughs> on top of whatever she's accused of saying or doing, there are people that are faves of others in the black community. That and not even just that. that people, are in contact, people who are trying to there are people that must say people who are still her. trying to publicly who, people who are still trying to publicly counsel her. Yeah, they don't realize that their fave. Are still friends with her behind the scenes. That's and that's exactly what it is. Like, and there's companies that are still supporting and want to bring her. You know, so it's just one of those Trust things. Me. Where, like, sometimes you gotta just like not allow yourself to get so involved because I think a lot of people, and this is just my opinion, a lot of people be trying right. to jump on the bandwagon of canceling people because they're scared. That they're gonna be mm. oh. missed out. It's almost oh, like sure. like um, Noah with the art. Like you're gonna get left, and if you're left, you're gonna drown. And I just feel like I don't feel like I'm ever gonna drown if I get left. And the reason being is because <clears throat> I stand on my own. I can't allow. There was a lot of there's a lot of things that I hear in the wrestling spaces, and then I try to get more information, and there's no more information. Or there's not information that's credible, or there's not 
information that is even a lot of people do a lot of recanting on a lot of stuff. That's why when I spoke oh, no, about, for sure. about I was canceled. Yeah. I was canceled. A lot of people don't follow me. Yeah. Couple couple of days later, they follow me follow me again and, and acting like nothing happened. And they'll do that. That's they do that. So it's like that's why I choose to just ignore social media for the most part. Yeah. If we're not friends, if we're not family, I don't I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> like what are we doing? But as far as like with Tessa, it's like and it's like you can't you can't continue to cancel Tessa and still praise Ric Flair. You can't continue to dismiss or try to d- disparage Swerve and Moose for not wanting to be on a list, but still in turn, slowly but surely, but in most parts, praise Hulk Hogan for the most part. Not everybody. It's some people who do just do not fuck with Hulk Hogan. I'm yeah. one of them. Same. I, I don't, don't speak either. for everybody, but, but I'm talking about. But I'm talking. I'm mainly talking to those people who are bandwagoners off of these big creators. Yeah. Like w- every word. Creators are whatever they want to be. Like I'm not knocking nobody. Do you do your hustle, whatever. But I'm talking about the people who are trying to who who just want to grind the coattail, like cancel culture. Like yeah, let's cancel this person. Let's cancel this person. Yeah. Now, one person who I'm who I who I want who who I don't even want to acknowledge is Patrick Clark. I don't think that's I'm just one be. person I just refused. Velveteen Dream. Oh, um. Because yeah, I don't. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like I, it once again another person that. Oh, he will be back. Trust me. Yeah, he just I did an interview with uh, much, Chris Van Bleet. Yeah, no, I saw that. I don't know him as much as I know Tessa. So when, 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 when her name's brought up, I'm more, much more um, aware. Would be the correct word. Mm-hmm. I'm much more aware of her and her and her and and the situations and stuff like that than I am with um, Velveteen. I I saw the video and I really felt like it was done in a very. Quick, I'm gonna hear it out. Yeah. I'm gonna listen to it. Yeah, just it very just to hear him out. Marketing, but um, at the same time, it's just like three years too late. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because there's one thing to be cu- accused of being racist, but there's another thing to be accused of being a pedophile. That's true too. That's very true. And so those conversations for a lot of people um, are very they're tough, especially when they hit multiple communities. And that's where you have to be. Integrity is the most important mm-hmm. thing. Like that's when you have to be like, okay, now, like, what's really going yeah. on? I'm, I'm about to say our moral of this com- of this topic is basically choose your own opinion and yeah. not just jump on everybody's opinion. If you don't want to fuck with this person, don't fuck with them. That's it. That's but all. don't do it because everybody else is don't fuck with them. That's it. That's the like I part. choose not to fuck with. I choose not to fuck with Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair, but that's not me saying. You should like yeah. I, that's one thing. That's one thing about my platform that I've created. I do not believe in people like canceling each other. Like I'm like I like you don't you don't go off my every word. You basically go off like I will give you my opinion, and it's up to you to either interpret it the way you want to interpret it. But at the same time, you have to develop your own opinion on this matter. Absolutely, and I so, always love especially when it comes to purpose. Like, I will always you love Rick because he gave me Ashley. Like, I can't. Yeah. That's a, that's just an undeniable. Like, this is the man that brought me, in my opinion. She's she's my favorite. She's Charlotte is number one for me. And meeting her and, like, when I see the stuff about Rick, I'm just like, listen, even, even it upsets her at times, I'm sure. And she sees it, and you know. So I try to keep it off. Any anything negative, I, negative, I just keep it off of my page, just out of respect. Because if it was my father, I wouldn't want to see it. No matter how much of a bad person he is, I wouldn't want to see it. I wouldn't want to see the story. I wouldn't want to see jokes. And the thing is, too, I have wrestlers that follow me, yeah. and I know they're friends with with each other. Yeah, I they all see. I it. don't. 
they see it. So it's like I'm not going. And one thing I'm strategic about yeah. who what I say to, and it's not because I or I don't want to burn this bridge or this bridge. Because right. I think about it like this: at the end of the day, everybody are friends and everybody are human. You have the room to grow. Like if this person doesn't want anything to do with this person, I'm going to respect their opinion. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit here and write their opinion either. I'm going to do my research. I'm going to do my due diligence to say, oh, okay, oh, you did this? I'm going to need you to get... And then it's like knowing knowing what I know about media and uh, HR and like getting involved in it, I'll be looking at people. I'm like, you going to get ahead of this? I'm like, bro, get ahead of this. And then when they go the wrong way, I'll be like, well... I I literally reply if you see me if something goes off and I you see me reply with a oh damn it's more so because it's like you reacted wrong my my nigga you had damn. a chance you had a chance you had a chance to get ahead of this and you just either dropped the bomb dug a digger pick a hole or you just completely went about it the wrong way it's crazy but hey you, at the end of the day that just proves to people they're human yeah everybody's human like they're going to make mistakes and it's up to you to give them room to grow so that's why i say i'm gonna listen to the interview with pat clark uh velveteen dream i'm a i'm a i'm i don't dismiss anything involved with tessa or whatever especially when i heard that like oh wait the people who are loud about against her are still friends with her behind the bet so it's like after hearing that i'm like oh okay I'm I'm not jumping on that bandwagon of counsel. Like it, I be yeah. having people in my DMs all the time talking about, oh, did you see this? I'm like, yeah, I saw it. You got any thoughts about it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just I did it. Nope. Um, I get those too, and it makes me. I'm gonna say this. I pay attention more to <laughs> who's sending than what's being sent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. But oh, it, it, I also know, remember just, most of these people play characters. Most of these people playing characters online anyway. And w- what's true. sad about it, they don't even work for the company. Like, what are you doing? You're not on payroll. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Crazy. The only time you see me playing a character is when my re- when when a couple of my wrestling friends would be like, "Hey, can you help me promote this this match?" And just yeah. act whatever we we react, just react to it. I'm like, okay, bet. And I like in this case in point, the uh, ruthless la la. They they have a they have a, prom- a promotion that they're um, promoting for. Mm-hmm. They'll send me stuff. They're like, hey, can you react to this? I'm like, I right, bet. And it literally takes me ten seconds. Yeah. But the thing the thing about them is, I talk to them on the regular, like yeah. away from social media. So it's not really oh, like a wrestler just hitting me up, like, hey, can you plug this? It's like these are people I know. So it's like. It's stuff like that that is that is pretty entertaining. But um, get we we're talking about off limits. You want to talk about that universe? I'm down. Do you want to? I mean, I have to. Um, like, do, we, the do, reason why I, I, I I'm gonna talk about it. I but can't it's like, say name, and, I, and I'm I'm up to I'm up to you can do, you can do whatever you want. Well, no, I, I really well want. legally. So this is legally you can't say names. Oh yeah, because uh, oh yeah, you got that uh yes that situation. Yeah. Uh, but uh, right. yeah, I mean yeah, we can. I, I mean, you know I'm up to date. I'm up to date with everything yeah. because I've I've been I've been following it. Yeah, and I've had people literally hit me up say, "Yo, what's up with uh, with what was it? Russell? What what the hell is the name of this place? Uh, it's, it's WWT. WWT. They're like, what's up with WWT and all these people leaving the place all over the place? And my response has always been, it is not my place, but it's up to whoever is here yeah. or whoever's in, involved to talk about it. So all you, I'm like, just be warned. Don't f- support them. Yeah. Just keep your eye open. Well, Lo, so, um, but yeah, Lo from the wrestling wind down. I know Lo was on here. Yeah, she yeah, wrestling a, wind down was recently on here. Well, she did a um podcast ab- about it. Um, about mm-hmm. I heard it having um, you know, just people do grimy things behind the scenes, and for me, the the biggest takeaway is being so naive to just trusting someone because of a culture thing. Me being how I am and how I was raised, I've never really had this type of disrespect. And like, Mm -hmm. I've never had this 
in the sense from a black woman. So I think that's what hurts more because it was done by a black woman who in sight is actually a white man. Okay. Um, I'll get it. I'll explain that much more as we, you know, digress. But we were building the biggest women's promotion for wrestling media ever. There was nothing, and there, and I don't think there will ever be. I don't think there will ever be a platform that was designed for women. And what we allowed ourselves to do is create something that was given by someone as, you know, pretty much she had already really had everything going off the ground. The thing is the whole time we were working hard as hell, trying to bust our asses, trying to get things. And behind the scenes, things were being taken from us, copyrighted. We were getting, we were supposed to be making money from our shows. We weren't making anything. We signed a six month deal with Twitch. And after the deal, we were told that they weren't interested in paying us. But the whole time we were there, we were making money. And all we kept hearing was, oh, I want to get you paid. We want to get you ladies paid. We want to get you ladies paid. And I just felt like waking, like, September was just, like, if I didn't make that move, this has been going on, mind you, this was going on, like, the disagreements and things behind the scenes. I was asked to fabricate a story with a wrestler just because... I had a picture with them that could have been misconstrued to be something that it wasn't. Now, one thing that I've learned about the wrestling community is people are very friendly. And I have very friendly relationships with certain people. And I'm not going to say his name either because I never say his name in the situation. People know who the hell I'm talking about. But I never say his name because I love him dearly as a friend. He is a friend to me. This is a man who I was a fan of literally and then became friends with to the point where I had my own publication wanting to damage someone's life, not even just his life, but staff, like you want to ruin your own staff. And I don't really do regrets. I, it's not my thing, but if I had a regret, I would, I would have left the day when I came back from the show and my boss was asking me to send her a picture of me and this man so she could put it on her show to make it a fucking story to make us look like oh like someone from wow. WWT is dating uh the the champion of this promotion and at the end of the day, I was still told, oh, well, we can still post it. We can do something with it. Why the fuck are you trying to make me a story? I, at that moment, I could not, we were, we were on the verge of something greater. I literally was like, I cannot walk away because I have a tag team partner. And if I walk away right now, I'm going to take away from so many women in this industry that deserve to be in multiple rooms the problem with that me thinking that way is is i allowed the chances of it happening to somebody else to be greater mm. because of how i handled the situation i didn't feel like and i don't feel like i handled this situation the way that i wanted to handle the situation i handled that situation the, the way i felt like i needed to in that situation to protect everyone on brand because i was doing more than just popping up on a fucking video i was doing shit behind the scenes i was trying to get interviews and people to come on the show and do all kinds of stuff and people know that people you can ask ali ketch you can ask shalant say royale you can ask jada stone i'm talking about girls on the indies you can ask jessica you can ask a plethora of people how hard I grinded for that company for the for not even just me so when I was getting opportunities and stuff I feel like I was only getting those opportunities because she felt bad because she was stealing 
from everybody the whole time. And we were sitting there doing a lot of the work. Me and Santana, we were doing majority of the work, especially on the outside. And I felt like, and this is just my opinion, this is not, I don't have proof. But looking back at everything, because everything happened so quick, I left and was like, fuck this shit, I don't care. But when I sat down and really was able to really digress certain things that was going on, those last couple months, I feel like we were the hottest, like, we was going on a crazy fucking run. Like, when I did the shit with Cody, I really felt like that's when it was like, nah, you're getting too big. Like, I knew you was going to get in the room, but I didn't think you was going to get a question type B. You know, that's when I started to realize, like, yo, like, like, what is this? Like, what 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 is happening? Like, why am I having so many debacles with my own boss? Like, why are you mm. coming at me like that? Why why did we just come from Detroit and you coming at me like that? Don't don't come at me like that. And that's when I was put on suspension suspension because there was a shirt that and that shirt thing is a whole nother entity. But the reason why we ended up um, departing ways is because they put up a shirt that was WWT EST and it had a man on it. So I had a problem with it. Um, and I said something about it. And I was like, take the shirt down or I'm not doing no shows. I sent them an email and I have proof of the email. And I told them that as of now, I will be resigning and I will step down. I'm not going to be representing a dumbass company that does dumbass shit period. And after that, I was told that a show that I brought was copyrighted and that I could not take it to another network and I couldn't take it anywhere. And that's when stuff hit the fan because people didn't know things were being copyrighted on their name. Every idea that was being brought, she was copywriting it and making money off of it, off of YouTube and other things. And we didn't know that. And other people still don't know this. And people are okay with that. And I, like, the story... Is so much bigger than one side because mm -hmm. she made a statement and literally the statement itself, you put your foot in your mouth. So it doesn't matter if people believe my story or not. I still did what I had to do. If I, if I would not have left in that moment, I just felt like it was, it was just not, gonna work and that's why i said i kept saying i was like i'm the sasha banks of this fucking industry because i'm the hottest free agent and i'm not going no i'm not going anywhere we're finna create mm -hmm. something i'm finna protect the person who's been here the whole time with me dreon santana and not one time when i left we were on the phone the whole time i never told her to leave i told everybody on that fucking staff if y'all stay with her i will still support y'all i'm just not finna i'm not finna do it i'm not right. doing it I will support y'all because there's so many opportunities. And when we, when I got fired, I literally was hitting up people in emails, trying to get AEW media and trying to get links and trying to get this and trying to contact all these people because I didn't have no other choice. The only source of people that I had in the media industry, as far as like emails was through them. I never had those contacts. So that happening it was a blessing because I can't hold everybody accountable. I can't. And everyone, there were people, and this is no shade. This is no tea. I'm just keeping it a book. There were people that were involved that are scared to fucking talk. And I'm not going right. to sit here and put everything on my back because my situation was my situation. And I kept trying to tell people, I'm not going to tell you what to do i'm not gonna tell you where to shift if y'all y'all been with this lady before you grown you grown as hell i'm leaving and people are gonna pay and that's how the restraining order came about because i made a comment that i was gonna smack the fuck out of anybody who steals from me and i mean that you stole from me 300 if you articles didn't steal I did. from somebody why you put a if, 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 if what you're saying isn't true why you put a restraining order to block me from events so put in a restraining order because you're telling promoters, you're you're behind the scenes begging promoters for tickets and they're hitting me up, telling me what's going on. Come on now. You're <clears throat> this was something that I never wanted. I never wanted 
it to happen. And no one even knows this besides Santana. But when we went to Memphis, we went to the Impact tapings. After the taping was over, I was so drunk because I was so filled with emotion. I sit there and just cried the whole time because I did not understand what was going on. And I just felt like I had taken so much from so many people because I spoke out. And I was lit like every day dealing with that. And that was my breaking point because I was just like, what? And then I'll never forget. I watched the scrum and there was a lot. There was like Emily was in there. Lyric was in there. Al was in there. Which there one was, was that? The recent one? I think it was the full gear one. Okay. It might have been full gear. Um, And I watched that and I was like, you know what? I watched that at home and I was like, you know what? I am going to do everything that I can to make sure that we stay afloat no matter what we're doing. And I think what pissed me off the most is after all of that, and I did the interview with Bianca, people were that conversation of like, you just interviewed Bianca, your prices go up. And I think that's what bothered me the most is like, as important as it was for me to interview Bianca, those girls on the indies are just as important. And Bianca mm. would agree. So just because I did this big WWE interview, if you think for one fucking second I'm not going to do another another interview with someone in the indies or feel like I have to interview someone above or on the same level as Bianca, that's shit crazy. And I don't run I don't run my content like that. I know who I am and I'm very humble, but I'm not finna. Oh, I interviewed Bianca. Oh, now it's like, oh, if you ain't giving me, and that's how people be acting behind the scenes and it trips me the fuck out. Like, oh, yeah. As soon as they get a touch of of star power, they they lose their, their sense of who they are. And it's like, like walking around while they mania like we celebrities. Well, we came to chill. This is a party. Shit, they don't know. I'm I'm a like me and me and highlight. We plan on hitting up Wally Man. I'm be like, bro, I'm just going to low key. Like, I don't care if people yeah, recognize it's... me or not. I'm just going to just the vibe. Like, I'm not going. To, I'm not, and the thing is, I'm not even going to make a big deal about it. Like, I'm like, I'm like, yo, catch me at Wally Man. I'm be like, if you see me, you see me. If you don't, all right. Yeah. And because I had people like when I was in Detroit, they was like, bro, I thought you, I thought I, you were going to be in Detroit. I, I thought I saw. I'm like, I told you where I was going to be. Like, I told you directly where I was going to be. You didn't show up. I'm not finna hunt you down. Like if you're not, if that's the that's the thing, that's my mentality. If you're not in my limelight, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> not gonna and that, you, this, this same goes with celebrities or whatever. Who are I me? Mean, I've I've been in the room with so many big celebrities, but whether it's in WWE, AEW, BET, whatever, and I literally treat everybody like they're human. So it's like I'm, you ain't got to worry about me changing because I'm like yeah. I was never. I'm not a super fan, and I never will be. It's crazy. Yeah. So, but, but yeah, yeah, all that you just said is, is, is a lot to. A lot it to is, process. and that's that's why when um Mr. Ballhead made his comments, I wasn't even trying to get into it with him, and that's why it's I just blocked book. him because it's like shut the it's hell the up. I wasn't even trying to like you talking about you. Uh, a lot of people. Don't, I don't mean to laugh, but <laughs> a lot of people not supporting him because. Uh, they don't know the full story. Who knows the full story of any story, you fucking idiot? Like, at the end of the day, you don't have to believe us. There's 10 people that left because they were told they tried to get answers from their boss. They couldn't get it. Y'all don't, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if the, it need, like, the, the meeting that happened after I left needed to be recording, but I promise you, if everyone was to hear that, ask that, um, well, let me not come on here and cause. No, you good. You okay, good. well, ask, you, ask, you ask um, Sarah the Rebel because she brought her nosy ass in there and now she got beef with me and I don't even know her. She was in the meeting. Ask her what was said. Ask her. Like, it's people that were in the meeting. It's not just my story. I wasn't even supposed to be in the meeting. Mm. Like. Yeah. You ain't got to hold back ever on this show. Like, I... I 
if people I got a problem with me or what you say you know, on the show, they can come to me directly. It's, it's they can late. come to me directly if they don't. If, if they choose to not come to me directly, that's that's between them and God. Yeah. They ain't got nothing to do with me. No, I feel you. I just I'm very protective of proximity. So you know, I, I don't. Oh yeah, mind. no, 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 no. Like the thing, the thing is, it's like the most of these unit. people you're mentioning, I caused the drama. The most of these people you mentioned, the, the most of these people that you're mentioning have never had a conversation with me. I yeah. don't even know who they are. Yeah. So it's like I'm not worried yeah. about them if they if they feel like I'm like. If they feel like they have a problem with, with, with what you said, the platform is open. They can come in yeah. and clear it out if they want to. If they want to, that's fine. I'll be waiting too for a response. I'm fine with it. But <laughs> she was there and they were there. Everybody heard what that woman said. She literally could not come up with the answers of uh, all the ideas that had been created and copyrighted and got, she was making money and nobody was getting the benefits. And I felt bad. I felt so bad for some of those people because they were people that were really loyal to her. And as Loyal as I was to her, I wasn't stupid. You're not going to talk to me any kind of way. She used to talk to me all kind of like we used to get into it on multiple occasions because of the direction that we were going in certain cases. If someone says, Hey, can you do this interview at this time within 15 minutes? If you can do it, you need to be sending everything over. Why are you sabotaging us and not emailing back on purpose? Because Oh, it may not fit the brand. Or oh, why are you telling me girls on the indies shouldn't be interviewed because they don't have anything going on, but you support women's wrestling? That doesn't make sense. I couldn't get an interview with your friend because you said she ain't had nothing going on. And then after everyone was fired, you did a show with the same girl because she had some nasty raunchy ass promotion going on on a thursday night freaking neeking and fucking in the ring and shit what but when i asked you for the interview she ain't had shit going on remember in june now she got some shit going on it don't make it, it was just you were sabotaging your own brand i'm talking about Arian and andrew by the way but no clue who that is but i trust cameron you. wwe oh oh yeah oh <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh! You talking about that promotion? Yeah. Oh, that? Oh, I forgot all about that. I, I, I think I reacted to that, and I was like, mm -hmm. what "The hell is yeah. this?" Pound town, <laughs> pound town. I was like, "Like by pound I town, trying, the I fine." I interviewed that girl in June, and as soon as the shit, the fine pound town. Like, I don't know. What? It's, it's like hoping and twerking and stuff, child. Oh. Basically, uh, they thought that was the paint. Yeah. And I wanted to interview her they during the was... summer. And I was told, oh, that's my friend. I can get her. And then I was told, oh, well, not right now because she doesn't have anything going on. What would be the purpose of doing an interview with someone who doesn't have anything going on? You know what I mean? Catching up. You know what I mean? Times I was told like... that for the girls on the indies. And then I see the girls on the indies doing an interview with them. And I'd be like, girl, they don't fuck with you. I'm just I'm just keeping it a buck. I'm not even trying to be rude or nothing like that. But what? They don't like, they don't care. If you're not hot and popping, they don't care about that interview. They don't. And it's sad to say, but it's a fake, it's a fake publication that's disguising themselves to love women's wrestling and they don't give a damn about women's wrestling. They only care about the ones that can get them to the next level. That's it. All right. So, hey, man. Whew. That's a lot of process. Like, and, and and I'm pretty sure it goes deeper than that. But it's like I said, like, it's from the outsider looking in. I just had to get someone who was in there because I kept getting asked about it when, when everything was hitting the fan. I'm like, when the time comes, they'll talk about it. And yeah. also, if you haven't already, make sure you check out uh, Wrestling Wind Down because I'm because yes. they did a show, uh, an episode on this uh, this topic or mm -hmm. I don't, I like I, I I always encourage people when it's stuff like this that happens, go to the source of mm -hmm. the conflict. Like deal with them, talk to them directly because it's not my place, especially as a man or in this in this highly polluted community to talk on it. So what I would do is like I did with uh with Low, I would literally just continue to encourage everybody who's watching this show mm -hmm. to really like if you support this person, whether even if you support, if you still support the WWT, the, whatever you do, support the talent, not the company. Mm. So it's like 
support people who if you believe if you be, if you believe in that person support them mm-hmm. and i don't and i'm talking to the brothers i don't mean support them behind the scenes i'm talking about give them a retweet give them a share give them a, a, a repost give like give them a comment give them traction like give the positivity traction because all that is just straight up like it shouldn't it shouldn't have happened and 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 the fact that you said it was a black woman that yeah. did it and apparently it's been makes going it worse. On. We got people wow. that used to work prior that were um, telling their stories in the spaces and, you know, giving, uh, wow. you know, I, I, I can only speak for myself. There's been a, a, a plethora of men who work in the media who have reached out to me publicly. I mean, privately. And we've had conversations, especially during everything. They, you know, we've had conversations. Um, but as far as everybody else. I will say this to to piggyback off what you said. If you're sitting there being quiet, don't expect other people to speak for you because you need to get up and speak for your motherfucking self. And that's to anybody that was on the staff or anybody that's doing who has something going on. I no one is in no one is um responsible for your own emotions. So if you got something to say, it it's, it goes beyond confidence. I don't care about none of that or stepping on toes or none of that shit. Stick up for yourself because I'm gonna be I'm gonna keep it a book. For those that didn't stick up for themselves, I don't feel nothing. No, nothing. Because you sit there and you let that shit happen and you sit there. And it's really not that now that I think about it, it's really not that many people that I know. But there were a few people that were very quiet. So if, if you quiet, that's cool. But don't think that you're gonna reap the benefits off of progression. Or whatever y'all want to say, and think that a bitch like me gonna sit around and just not say nothing and try to be the big bad wolf. I'm not the big bad wolf. I'm not. I'm not. I wasn't trying to come and blow and knock nothing down. You know what I was trying to do? I was trying to let bitches know, don't play with me. I don't know what everybody else got going on. Don't play with me and mine. You steal from me. Y'all taking out court. Y'all doing court shit. I I know who I, I know what type of ops I'm missing. I'm missing with. Y'all mm-hmm. doing poor shit. We don't do that. And y'all thought it was gonna be funny, and it wasn't fun. It's not funny. And now y'all have to sit up here and keep giving this poor ass content, and it's really sad because you see it, you watch it, and you be like, "Damn, like y'all are suffering." Instead of I don't hosts, watch, you know, so I take your word for it. No, I watch because them hoes be speaking on me. So I watch. I know when y'all speak on me. Y'all spoke on me the other day. So. Yeah, I watch and I pull up every time and I see because I want to see y'all suffer. I really hope one day when y'all get on there, y'all eyeballs start bleeding out. Real shit. Real shit. I really want to. I really want to see that. Like y'all need to start doing more theatrical stuff and really entertaining these people because y'all boring as hell. And you can tell it's, it's struggles. It's sad. It's really sad to watch, but... They don't want to close up shop. And I'm not here. Like I said, I'm not no big bad wolf. And I'm not here to blow shit down. Your rent is going to be, baby, they're going to evict you regardless. You're going to you're gonna find your way out the fucking door. I don't care how big of a name you got on your company or whatever you think. Eventually, that's why I keep telling everybody to keep hitting me up. Talking about, so what are we going to do? What are we going to take action? I'm not, doing, I'm not doing shit. I'm doing what I'm doing. Y'all want to bend around and start marching and, and act like it's MLK and all that. No, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. Go I'm like, uh, 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 if ain't nobody trying to come outside, I'm not doing it. Y'all ain't trying to come outside and beat on nobody and fight. I'm not talking about that. It, too too much internet stuff be going on where we could just meet up at a show and they could just put us on the court. But y'all not ready to do that. So when y'all ready to mm-hmm. actually take some action, then I, I'm I'm with that. A lot of y'all seen her at that scrum and y'all didn't touch her. She there's no way that. She should have left that scrum untouched. That's crazy than where I'm from. Where I'm from, that's wild. Y'all let somebody sit in a room with y'all and y'all stole? Like she stole from y'all? No. 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 I don't consider it. That's why I say I don't feel bad because y'all sit there and let that woman walk out. Y'all could have broke her leg or something. The restraining <laughs> order is against me, not y'all. I'm the one that got the restraining order. Y'all can touch her. But ain't nobody trying to make no like that's why I laugh because ain't nobody real. Like 
Motherfuckers say they real. They not real. You got somebody in your face that's stealing from you. You ain't take no action. I don't think you real. So I don't fuck with you. I fuck with you in your content, but I don't fuck with you on some street shit because I know how you get down. I never trust you on some beef type shit because this is beef. No, no. This will never be over for me. <laughs> Period. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't. Uh, I, I'm. I don't mean to be sound like Stone Cold Steve Austin, but I don't trust anybody. <laughs> So That's fair. it's like, and, and like I said moments ago, like if people want, if people got a problem with it, when this episode goes up, if people got a problem, they can come, they can either address me directly or it continue to be ignored because that's they the beauty won't. behind, that's the thing about me and the, and, and the world that I've built. I don't, I don't pay, I don't go chasing drama. I don't go chasing waterfalls. I literally yeah. ignore your existence. If you don't come, if you look at me, if you come at me sideways, mute it, you're done. You can block me. Like I'll block you back just to make sure you don't change your mind when I pop off. So it's like it's stuff like that. So it's like I I get I get why you feel like that because <clears throat> it had to be it, it's 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 your truth and you have every right to feel that way. Yeah, and I don't want like, people. And, to, and, I'm not asking for people to agree. Yeah, that's pretty much the moral of our entire our entire sit down was like. You have your opinion, but you're not entitled to agree. You can agree to disagree, or you just just don't agree. And that's okay. You can be friends that, with you can be friends with people you don't agree with. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't. I don't agree with everything Dwayne says or highlight. I don't agree with everything he said on the on these shows. But I, I'm like, I hear you. But one thing I am not going to do is once this camera's off, it don't mean I'm going to just. Talk shit about you behind your back. I'm like, yeah. yeah, we that was a good episode. We we had into we had some great dialogue. We'll continue with the next episode, or we just don't, or we'll just forget about it because I'm not saying I'm saying I'm I'm high as hell, so I forget a lot of stuff. And he just be he be exhausted from work, and he just forget to talk about it. So it's like that's and that's our that's our relationship. And it's like in in this space, I feel like at the end of the day, in this space, you have to come correct. But if you slimy, everybody has a reason. Everybody ha isn't uh, obliged to support you if you're proven to be slimy it, it is what it is and if you're that person that likes to hate watch somebody and i talk about you like you have your reasons but i'm talking about other people <laughs> who like literally yeah. go out of their way to hate watch then it's like find another outlet at the end it's of the day sad, but, so. hey hey man yeah that's a that's a lot but yeah it's cool though but i outside of that outside of that what you outside of that you said, i'm what? gonna be very honest i have never had the amount of love and i tweeted about this the other day like i know that this industry gave me pain during some weird times but the love that i've received from i'm not even just talking about like wrestlers but outside like in the media going to la was like so rewarding because i was around a lot of peers and i didn't do anything wwe related i really made my own um I made my own path in LA. I kind of did my own thing. I did a few events for WrestleCon and, you know, did that. And there were some other pop-ups and I did some shows and stuff like that. And I just really, it, LA, being around your peers, it really allowed me to focus on what I was doing at that time. And even though that's shifted, um, I was able to have a conversation with Mercedes and that six months later, I never would have thought what she said to me would resonate so heavy, like for me. So as much as I do come off sometimes as mad or angry or whatever for the situation, I'm having a great time and I love being in this space. And a bitch will have to chop my neck off and serve it on a platter and tell Fightful to do the story before I leave this business. Like, <laughs> Cause five will report anything. Okay, Nikki got a head chopped off. <laughs> um and shout out to Fightful. when they say our crew likes to eat nuts. Fightful showed us the love um when we first you know did our thing. Uh Danny Limelight was one of our first interviews. So there's just a lot of random like I can name so many different people that showed me love. I always gotta show um Chelsea Green my baby, I always got to show her love because she was one of Chelsea the first. Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green. She was one of the first girlies when she got on the indies. Um, Chelsea had a plan, 
and she stuck through it. And we would we would chat a lot on um, the indies and when she would do her meet and greets. And she was always she she has that mentality that's like so powerful that even in the shittiest situations, she can find herself and be one of the biggest like no matter what room she's in she's one of the biggest and i just love chelsea for that diana too that's my baby and i'm really sad seeing her go um but now i'm over on the aw side honey i don't i don't know how they gonna treat me over here i heard them locker rooms <laughs> nasty as fuck though so i don't know <laughs> I don't know how they're going to treat me over here in the media, AW locker rooms. I heard y'all got them church chairs, too, over there. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of random-ass people. <laughs> Camille, uh, one of my really good friends, we've really connected um, and been able to talk and just really get to know one, one another. She gave me this bracelet, and she's just really meaningful. But there's a lot of people... Um. Yeah, there's a lot of people in this industry that have really just loved on me. It, 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 whether it was a bad situation or not, like just period. Like I remember the Cody thing. I couldn't even be on my phone for like three days because after I left doing the thing with Cody, I saw Charlotte and that was just the icing on the cake for me leaving Detroit. Like. Mm -hmm getting that you know getting that hug you know I, I was very thrilled about the Cody moment you know that was <laughs> that was peak but after that seeing Charlotte I was just like man like this is this is life so when everything bad happened I was like please remember how you felt when you walked out of Ford Field and you had that and you were twerking in Detroit with some random ass people because the city was fucking lit you know remember those times Cause right now it's hard. But There's some stories just... about Detroit. Oh, Detroit! Was... Stories about Detroit for that. Yes, <laughs> like we were on uh... go. Like I didn't even really get to enjoy the city like that, but we were on go. But I loved um, that trip was eerie because, <sighs> yeah, that trip was eerie because I was actually I planned that whole trip around someone. Um. And that person ended up ghosting me and was actually at SummerSlam. And yeah, it was bad. It was so bad. But good times. <laughs> I forgive. I have forgiven that person since then. Uh, God damn. Yeah, it was really, it was. Shit always happens it in does. Detroit. <laughs> uh, oh, Lord. It, it, yeah, it was, it was a good time. But I got to see a lot of people. Detroit was funny because. WrestleCon sucked because they wanted to be stupid. But um, oh, no, I mean, we went. We went. It was depressing. Yeah, that's why I met you. I think that's. I think the only picture I took, I bothered taking, was the one with the acclaim. But outside of that, I was just like, Yeah, they yeah, were ready to go. <laughs> that was not a WrestleCon. WrestleCon in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Top. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to go to another WrestleCon because that one. I think no. Philly's gonna be better. I think because of what okay. happened, um, you know, everybody canceled them this year uh, because of what happened with you know the incident with um, in LA uh, with Giselle Shaw. Um, oh, and uh, Rick. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Rick and Steiner. Yeah, that was happening in the midst of us going. So when they did it for the following show for the SummerSlam weekend, everyone pulled out. Like AW was supposed to be on. Like when we were in LA, Britt, mm -hmm. Adam Cole, Anna J, uh, uh, what's the what's the guy's name? Jake Perry. All of them were down there. The whole oh AW. Jack oh we're talking about oh jung Jungle Jack Boy. That's why I call yeah. him Jungle Jack Boy. Jungle Boy, uh, Jack Perry, Crime Jack River. Perry. Yeah, he's a he's 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 a nice guy. I know he gets a lot of shit uh, online because of the whole CM Punk thing, but he's he was nice. He was so him and Andrew oh, I, 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 don't, I don't have no beef with Jack Perry. Like that dude, yeah. like yeah. I, I think I, I've had, I met with somebody. I think I I had a conversation with somebody who trained with him. They had mm -hmm. some 
some mixed some mixed things to say about him, but I was just yeah. like, congratulations, I guess. Like when people yeah. when some people vent to me, I'd be like, okay. <laughs> well, people, I hear you, but it's, people think I hate him because I made but, a tweet. I was trolling, but Deanna beat oh, the um, difference. De- right? Deanna beat Anna J. And I was like, yeah, get her. I was like, get her the fuck out of here and send her back to stardom with her man. Trolling. <laughs> and people were like, what's your beef? You must be a punker. And I'm like, I just started like and seeing punk last year. Like, what 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 is punk? <laughs> Literally. Like, I'm I just like, I'm, started, a, I'm a newbie. I'm, I just started like the like, series. Literally, like. <laughs> Literally, like, I just like the when, when he returned. Like, when he returned like when to he WWE, came back, I hated him back then. Like now, I'm like, well, I just started liking him. You think I don't like him because of that? I don't even know what they were doing. I love the drama. <laughs> like, I like him more than he said something to CM Punk. Like, what? I don't know, but oh man, they just need to do better. Oh, man. Russell Khan has to do better. But overall, the entire community needs to do better. It's like. We human, we make mistakes, but at the same time, it's like, God damn, there's always some shit. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even be online like that no more because I'd be like, it's some shit. <laughs> it, it does get overwhelming. Today was an actually good day because I didn't see any drama and they were all, everyone was so distracted by 2K. So. Mm-hmm. They was distracted by 2K, then Chris Van Vliet dropped that trailer for Velveteen and then oh, she upset? hit the fan. I was like, oh. Yeah, I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. We I can't mean, go I'm one day. <laughs> I'm, I'm still watch it, but it's just yeah. like, I'm going to watch it. Like I said, like I have my, my, my reservations, my thoughts, because it's like, okay. But at the yeah. same time, it's like, you have to be, you have to hear people out. And you have Absolutely. to, like, you can't just dismiss it. You can't just dismiss something and then, then throw it away. I'm like, you're going to hear it out. And that's how I choose to go, especially since October. That's been my whole philosophy. Like, I don't, I'm not talking based off of my recent, my, my past. Like, people be like, oh, is this you? I'm like, yeah, you're talking to 2023 and before Gresh. Yeah. 20, October 2023 to now is a whole completely diff- different ballgame. Like, I'm looking at life differently. So it's like, yeah. I'm open to letting everybody give their you know, like I, it, my, sometimes I have my moments where I, where I relapse. I'll be like, eh, but it's like, no, Josh, you're, you're a different breed now. Like, hear them out. And if they say something stupid, then you can call them out on it. Yeah. But, yeah. So, well, outside of that, yeah, it's been pretty, pretty peachy on there. But what you, before we get up out of here, what you got going on coming up? Whoo. Um, we're doing a big uh, Black History Month spotlight. Uh, we're going to be featuring um, some indie indie talent. We're also going to be featuring a few um, podcasters as well. Uh, I know we for sure um, will be uh, releasing the interview for Jada Stone. She's one of our highlights. Someone who I've gotten really close with as well. She's really sweet. She's really she can go in the ring. I know everybody was talking about like Jay Cargill, but Jada Stone is the girl that she was actually in the ring with. Um, mm-hmm. and I know that a lot of people were excited to see Jay Cargill. I am too, but knowing Jada, I, you know, I want her to get just as much as exposure and just as much as respect. Um, she actually, Mercedes Monet actually wore her t- shirt on her story, uh, recently too. So we talked about that. So that's going to be dropping at the first of the month. Um, other than that. I'm being really low key about my events because bitches want to hate. Okay. <laughs> no, because I couldn't go to hard to nah, kill. You, you, but you make um, moves in silence and, and celebrate the victories later. Okay. I will. I, now, b- beyond anything, I don't care who shows up or what happens, I will be a vengeance. That's a automatic. Mm-hmm. That's in my neck of the woods, my state, Clarksville. So if you're in the area, make sure you pull up. I will also be doing AW Revolution, y'all. So be nice to me. Cause I don't want to have to <laughs> table. I'm anymore. still thinking about like, should I should I make that six hour drive to? I don't know. I'm flying North Carolina. I can't, I can't do it. No, nah, cause I usually drive to, to North yeah. Carolina for work anyway, so it's kind of like yeah. I'm used to it. And and I'll be fl- and, 
never have to think about it. Yeah, because I'm from, I'm, yeah, I'm in, I'm in, Atlanta, I'm, I'm stationed in Atlanta, but I'm always traveling. Like, I, like literally, people, like I, people be thinking. <laughs> I usually keep my shit low key, but when I posted that thing with BET, they was like, "Oh, you out there ball?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. I, I be out here. I just don't, I just don't talk about it because I'm like." I'm not that I'm not I'm not performative. I'm always private with my shit. Like I've been like that since I was a kid. So it's like you can you can probably thank Mama Grush for that. Like she literally trained me to like celebrate move in silence but celebrate your victories afterwards. So right. Hey man. Anybody and anybody who prayed your downfall, return to Cinder. Hey man, okay, because <laughs> that's uh, that's it though. But, uh, you can catch us every week though. Um the Shakers Den, we do about five shows a week. So yeah, 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 I do. I'd be I'd be like, damn, how do I keep up? Let me just retweet this shit. <laughs> I'm like, how do I, I'm back how and the hell do I keep up with this? <laughs> like, let me watch this shit later. Like, I'm like, yeah, retweet. Yeah, yeah, y'all watch this. <laughs> I'm still trying to edit my shit. Like, y'all watch this. <laughs> like, right? Crazy. But yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. But uh outside of that, yo, you gotta yeah, you you, you I, I respect your your open your openness. Like that's the beauty behind it, and that's the reason why this thing is talking. Is like we just here to talk, here to vibe, and here to here to to catch up. And I always tell people all the time: if you disagree with anything that's said on these bonus episodes, all you got to do is hit my DM and then and or at me. Well, scratch that; I don't get notified. Uh, DM me, and you can hop on here at me because I'm DM the one who said it. Like, yeah. I'm just, one you know how kidding. people are. You know how people are. They love to. The, they love to the incorporate people who 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 don't who ain't got shit to do with nothing, but they want right. to. Uh, yeah, but I'm like, yeah, just, yeah, I'm always available. Any at her night, yeah, please. If you want to have a conversation, yeah, and, and and I'm 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 not really on social media like that, but you can, like, I get on it to get on it, but it's like I'm not. I don't live it. But yeah. if you want want to have a conversation, you can you can pull up to Austell. Marietta, come on, Gwinnett. Man. All come on, verses of Paris I'm, for I'm, I'm everywhere. Come on, I'm everywhere. Del, come on, Delt Road. Where my Del, where my Delt yeah, Road girls at? Where my old net girls at? Where my uh Virginia Avenue girls at? Where my Cleveland Avenue girls at? Yeah, Yo, you ain't know that. Yeah, I'm in Atlanta. I'm where glad you didn't say Fulton Industrial. Where my Gateway? We don't at? talk about Fulton Industrial. <laughs> where my Franklin Gateway <laughs> NC girls at? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just don't go there after after midnight. Oh man. Hey, <laughs> but nah, yeah. I tell people everywhere. I'm like, bro, you can pull up if you want to have a conversation face to face. Cause I'm not I'm not I'm not performative. And it's like and, and my and my reach, my city is is expanding. I got some I got some people in Florida. I got some people in North Carolina. So it's like I'm I'm everywhere. You can if you come to the South, guarantee if you want to come on some on some bullshit, I got backup. But I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to see how you come, and then I'm going to come correct it, and then go from there. But outside of that, yo, it was it was it was real <laughs> kicking it with you on yeah. today's uh, bonus episode. It's been months in the making. Uh, we had a lot. We talked about a lot, and we had a lot to. This was this was literally vibes and freestyle. Like that was the point. That's the point of these talking uh, episodes. The main show was typically scripted and balanced, but it's just here, it's just us having a conversation with a camera in our face, just like we having a conversation if we was anywhere else. But uh, where can they find you on social media? Um, if you want to see a more happier Nikki, you can follow me on Instagram. <laughs> I'm not as chaotic. Um, I have a lot of friends over there, and I have a good time. And we play Fortnite, and bitch, I've been getting victories. Um, so if you have PS5, make sure you add me, Nikki underscore Bougie. Come join the squad, because we be on Fortnite every day. Me and Santana. But you can follow me on Twitter. Um, that's really where the, the, the good stuff is. At the, the chaos. Yeah, that's, that's where the stuff is. And I also have people that follow me like outside, like the reality TV world, like Jackie Christie. And so if you're really into reality TV, you'll see that thrown into the mix. Even though wrestling has taken over my whole social media life. Um, I also work in sports too. Um, so make sure you check out some of my reels that I'd be making, just talking about my experience um, with MLS and also NHL, because I'm a big sports girly. Um, Lastly, because I know I didn't respond to the tweet, I'm hoping 
If you're listening to 49ers, please take down the whole city of Detroit. <laughs> please. <laughs> oh, and, and the Buccaneers, y'all can kick that shit. Yes, I don't know what the hell y'all had going on. Y'all was playing some, y'all was playing some offense, but that interception in that last quarter, you you played yourself. And they lost, and they and 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 they didn't make the. How you didn't miss that field goal, boy? How the hell you? Mm. <sighs> y'all deserve that. Y'all deserve that hell. Y'all, no, no, y'all did. Some of y'all no, deserve. Y'all some of y'all deserve this. Some, no, y'all some of the shit. That, my season is over. Like we did, we talked our last uh, football roundup last episode. I mean, we might do it again for Super Bowl season. But yeah, I'm a Titans fan. Yeah, so our season normally wraps up pretty quick too. <laughs> Okay. This was my first year being like actually taking football serious after yeah. the Falcons uh, fumble the uh, Super Bowl. Now I'll get down with some college. Pro is <laughs> oh yeah, college yeah, yeah. college yeah, college was my thing. Like yeah. Georgia Bulldogs, they, like we, we, we bounce bad next year, but but f- but pro yeah, I stopped taking it serious after the Falcons. I was like, man, fuck this shit. Yeah. <laughs> so mm. so it's like this this, this Dolphins. Y'all gave me a rocky, a rocky first season as a fan. So hopefully next year y'all can pick up the slack. Who knows? It's Miami football, so who knows? But uh, yeah, if you are new, if you're new around here, you want to check out the podcast itself. Uh, you can follow the pod at Gresh Unleashed Pod on YouTube, uh, Gresh Unleashed everywhere, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook as well. If you want to follow yours truly on the socials, Josh Gray everywhere except for Twitter, which is at is Gresh, or on uh, TikTok, which is AO is Gresh. But uh, outside of that, make sure you scan that QR code so you can listen to the theme song for this particular uh, bonus episode, which is Talk My Ish or Talking Ish, excuse me. Uh, where shout out to Highlight Real for being the vocals behind that, and shout out to ATL Beats, uh, the producer, for copping hey. up that beat and. Uh, yeah, all, shout out to everybody. Everybody, black, pro black, non black. Shout out to everybody for listening to this podcast. Because at the end of the day, you make you line in my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> you line in my pockets. And with that being said, make sure you guys continue to be true to yourself. Stay true to yourself, and make sure you guys wash your ass. I say that all the time. I, I ain't say that in a long time, but wash your ass. If you if you if you're a wrestling fan, wash your ass. That's all I'm saying. That's it. With that being said, you guys stay safe out here in these streets. And remember to always eat, sleep, flex, and repeat. We out. Y'all be breezy.